Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, and I just wanted to do a quick video on heat management. Hopefully I can cram a lot of material in into a short video. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but there's three things I want to stress, kind of important for you to remember. If you remember these three things, it should help you along. Now the first one is abyssalite, and that's this material over here. It's purple looking stuff. Now it's um, really important in heat management because it's a perfect insulator. If you look under the details, you can see its thermal conductivity is basically zero. It's like a tiny, tiny number. So if you build pipes, uh, gas pipes, liquid pipes, walls out of this stuff, it will prevent heat from getting in or out of the pipes or walls. So you'll notice I'm using debug mode here, but I've just got a little starting area. You'll notice the starting area is kind of like a circle of green. Uh, if you look at the thermal overlay, it's nice and cool. So it's around 22 degrees. But just outside of the starting area, it's pretty warm. So if you look here, this area here is 36 degrees. And that's typically, uh, you'll have hot areas kind of all around your starting area. If I turn on debug mode, you can zoom out a bit and look at this starting area. So really hot here, really hot here. And that's kind of important because this hot rock will, all the heat from this hot rock will eventually seep into your base. So one thing I do kind of, not right away, but uh, fairly early on, is to collect up some abyssalite, go mine some abyssalite here. And then I usually uh, make the side walls of my base out of abyssalite. So we'll just kind of cheat and drill some of this out. But you would, you can use regular tile. It doesn't need to be insulated tile. Insulated tile costs twice the number of materials. It costs 400 kilograms per tile. Now, all the only difference between insulated tile and regular tile is its mass. So you're better off just using regular tile, unless you want that visual indicator to see that it's different. So let's use insulated tile, even though I just said not to. And we'll use abyssalite. And we'll put it up there. So if you kind of surrounded your whole base in this abyssalite, abyssalite tile, it would prevent the heat from here leaking into your base and it would keep it nice and cool. And I'll go into more about abyssalite later, but that's, that's the first thing I want you to remember. The second thing is weaseworts. Weaseworts are magical. They're our friends. We love them. And you'll find them in the ice biomes. They look like this. And they basically just cool the air around them. They're... They're pretty awesome. This is what their seed looks like when they're not uh, not living. So you can dig them up just like any kind of plant. Good idea once you get your basic uh, bedrooms, toilets, and mess hall set up is to kind of venture out, do some exploratory digging, and find these ice biomes and get these weaseworts. And you can plant them either in your base or wherever you need cooling. And the third thing I want you to remember is about this thing, the anti-entropy thermal nullifier. Uh, I just call it the heat sink. That's that's the name it originally had. Now it doesn't require power, but if you if you pipe hydrogen into it, it has kind of a vent that you can pipe into. If you send hydrogen into this thing, it doesn't use very much. It will cool itself and kind of the surrounding area. So these are really powerful for cooling, cooling things. So. Remember, abyssalite, weaseworts, and heat sink. You don't need to use these, but they're they're pretty beneficial, and they're usually hidden under ice. I've dug this one out down here, but they'll often be hidden like this one. Let's dig this out so we can see it. So there's one there. There's often two or three per map. I think I saw another one down here. Yeah, under here. There's a third one. Now I usually only use one. Sometimes too, but now you can't move these things um, Unfortunately, but you can build all your hot machinery like power production and oxygen production around these and then use them to cool cool the machinery and they're one of them is powerful enough to cool like 10 natural gas generators and lots of other things. So they're really kind of overpowered maybe um, And I don't know how long they'll last they might last forever in the game because it's still early access, but they're very beneficial. So your early starting base, you're usually given a few pockets of water. 
I've kind of fused two together here. Here's another one. And that'll set you up for quite a while. Uh, you'll use it to make um, food and stuff. You'll use it in algae terrariums, which aren't the best, but uh, they're decent. But eventually you'll, you'll run out of the starting water and you'll be on the lookout for a steam geyser, which uh, on this map was down quite a ways, actually way far away from the starting base. Not very lucky in that respect. Now, when you first start playing the game, a common thing is to set up a pump in here and pump the water into your base. But this water is really, really warm. It starts out, some of it's 30 degrees, but as it kind of, you use it, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And this, the surrounding area will also get warmer. So if this thing is close to your base and you don't seal it in abyssalite, it's going to eventually cook your base. It'll just get too hot. So a common way to use these is to kind of dig around the dig around the surrounding area. Now it's easier in debug mode, obviously, but you can do it with duplicates. And then you build a, an abyssalite kind of housing around it like this. Doesn't need to be that big. It can even be smaller than this. I'll leave room for a pump. So something like this. And you might want to clear everything that's in there first so it's nice and tidy. So now all the heat will be trapped in here. It can't get out. And before you seal it all up, you might you want to put in a pump, a liquid pump, and you want to make it out of gold amalgam. And that way it won't overheat. This pump normally overheats at 75 degrees, but when it's made out of gold, it'll melt at 125. And this room will never get up to 125, so you're safe. You also want to use liquid pipes made out of abyssalite to get the water out of there. So you'll want to pre-build this before you seal it all up. And lead that pipe all the way to your base. Now gold amalgam on the map looks like this stuff right here this kind of shiny golden looking stuff and it's there's quite a bit of it on the map so it's pretty easy to find now this room will get really hot it'll get up to about 95 degrees and the water that it produces will get up to 95 degrees and the reason you're using this abyssalite pipe now you wouldn't you actually don't need to use it right along here but it's kind of nice because everywhere this pipe goes if you made it out of something like sandstone or granite the heat would leak out of it and that might be fine if it's far away. Like if we don't care if this area here gets hot, then it's not such a big deal. But if it was close to your base, you wouldn't want to use uh, sandstone or granite or something like that because the, the hot water would leak all its heat into your base and that would be bad. So we're trying to lead this up to the base. Where is our base? Way up here. Is there another one that's closer? That one's really far. Don't really see one. So I cleared uh, some room for us just to build this pipe up. So you would lead it up to your base. You'd build a ladder obviously. And then we can put it in here to use. Now if you're gonna... S the reason you'd want water is probably for lavatories which are the upgraded bathrooms. Now lavatories can use super hot water. The dupes won't mind. But what you need to be careful about is that the water that comes out of them, the polluted water, is going to be just as hot as the water you sent in. So this, if, it, if we got 95 degree water coming in, we're going to have 95 degree polluted water coming out. Now you can store that hot polluted water somewhere far away from the base, or you could get rid of it. There's many ways to get rid of polluted water, and I won't go into that, but fertilizer synthesizers are one these things, you can pump polluted water into them and they'll make fertilizer and natural gas for you. So that's one way to, to destroy the, the hot water. You could go put it in an abyssalite container somewhere. Uh, just make a box. A nice square box like I just did. And you could send you could send that hot polluted water out and drain it in there. But that's just a temporary measure. You're going to have to deal with that polluted water at some time. You could filter it with a sieve. That's under utilities. Sorry, under refinement water sieve. But I guess the key message is don't use granite pipes in your base for hot water. 
otherwise all that hot heat will escape and just cook your base. Now you're going to be putting lots of machines in your base like um, massage tables for instance you might have a few of those and when you go to build one of these you can see um, under effects heat 3.13 watts and that's how much heat this machine is going to give off when it's running so pretty much every machine that you're going to build gives off heat so if you got a bunch of machines in your base they're just going to get really really hot even simple things like lights these lamps they give off 2.5 watts of heat what else do we have here some of the bigger offenders are things like the oil refinery it gives off 50 watts of heat so this thing gets really hot so if you're going to build it in your base uh, make sure you have a way to cool it one of the simplest ways is to grab some weaselworts those little guys and kind of plant them using a uh, flower pot plant them by the uh, oil refinery that'll kind of do some localized cooling now one of the things that heats up your base the, the I find the most is your power production so whether you're using hydrogen generators coal generators I end up using a lot of natural gas generators these these things give off a lot of heat and if you're building a big power system you might have like three to ten of these natural gas generators so as you can imagine if you built a lot of them let's say like really close to your base let's say I built them right here I made a big spot for them yeah let's say I built my power plant here and this is what I used to do and then I learned I learned to not do that yeah so let's say you put your power plant in here in like a column this area would just get warmer and warmer and warmer and all the surrounding area would get warmer maybe to the point where this would just become too warm and if you didn't have this abyss light wall protecting your base all the way down your base would cook a really good way to manage your heat of all these power producers is to build them in an ice biome especially if you have one of these uh, heat sinks so if you build your power plant let's say I built my power plant like here kind of in this area I could keep it cool with this thing plus the area is cold to start with and things would be really good <laughs> So you're using the natural cooling plus you're kind of getting a bonus with this uh, nullifier and then you would lead uh, some power wires into your base and you would keep all that heat out of your base now why is heat bad um you probably already know because you're watching this video but uh, dupes get uh, heat stroke at a certain temperature yeah if you hover over their uh, body temperature you can see their their body temperature is 37 i i can't remember exactly when they get heat stroke but somewhere around 50 or 60 i think which is like an illness and you'll have to put them in a medical area and let them heal up the other thing is is that some machinery will melt down unless you build it out of gold so you generally don't want your your base to get really hot now there's some machines that will destroy heat for instance the carbon skimmer under oxygen carbon skimmer this thing requires clean water in and it sends polluted water out but you could send in uh, clean water at 95 degrees and it will always come out at 40 degrees now they might change that in the future but it's a way to destroy heat so let's say you had some cool water for instance maybe over from the cool area you could circulate it through your base using um, granite pipes for instance uh, it would warm up and then you could send it into the carbon skimmer and destroy that heat having a base that's too too cold is much easier to deal with than a base that's uh, too hot because you can always build some space heaters to warm up the areas that are getting too cold but to cool the air you need to build uh, these thermoregulators which themselves give off a ton of heat and they're really hard to cool so these are not really ideal for kind of cooling your base there's also the hydro fan but it's very it's really useless in my mind I've never really used it it requires water and a duplicate to use it and it does barely any cooling so I wouldn't bother with one of these there's probably about 20 or 30 weaselworts on the map if you go and dig them all out and like I said you can use those for kind of localized cooling if you had a hot machine in your base now when you get to mid game 
uh, when you've kind of exhausted all your algae and slime, which takes a long, long time because there's a lot of slime and algae on the map, you'll probably want to start making uh, electrolyzers under oxygen here. They take in fresh water, which is going to be pretty hot by the time you get to mid-game because it's coming from uh, steam geysers. And the electrolyzer itself gives off uh, 6.25 watts of heat. So these I generally put in a cold area as well because uh, I build quite a bit of them. And you're going to have pumps uh, and filters extracting the uh, oxygen. And you're probably going to have a hydrogen generator or two or more um, burning off the excess hydrogen that comes from these things. So generally a good idea to not build them in your base uh, unless you've got a lot of weaselworts, but to instead build them in a cold area or an area that you can cool really easily and then pipe in the cold oxygen. Now one quick way, or not quick way, but an easier low-tech way to cool down this geyser water is if you're lucky enough to find an ice biome kind of below it, you can just kind of dig a uh, dig a cavern or whatever, or use a pump and pump it into a cold biome. I like to use gravity just because it's really easy. Um, and that geyser wa water will... It comes out at, as steam at over 100 degrees, but it'll cool down really quickly when it hits this ice biome. And it'll stay cool for quite a while, probably hundreds of cycles before all the ice and stuff melts in here. One downside is that there's a lot of polluted ice in here that will melt and mix with your clean water. But you can use a liquid filter to, under plumbing, liquid filter, you can use a liquid filter to filter out the clean water from the polluted water. Now, if you can't find an ice biome kind of directly beneath, maybe it's it's only above, kind of like this uh, geyser down here. This geyser didn't have anything, no ice biomes below it. So you would just pump it up into the closest ice biome, maybe like this one. It's kind of small, but pump it in there. It'll naturally cool down in here and then pump the cool water out to use in your base. It's not a permanent fix though. So I, I prefer doing this and then pumping out uh, the really hot water and using that in the base with the bisolite piping. Now the water sieve, uh, also similar to the carbon skimmer, if you send hot water in, the water that comes out is always at 40 degrees. So it's a good way to, to uh, destroy heat. Kind of yet another way to cool your um, geyser water. Uh, it's not a permanent solution, but it's kind of a temporary solution, is to use a bisolite pipe all the way up into a cold biome and then build a radiator system out of wolframite. So we've got some wolframite right here. And Wolframite's good because it has a high thermal conductivity of 15. So if you build pipes out of um, Wolframite, if you have hot water in them, they'll leach the heat out really well. So let's say we cleared out this ice biome a little bit. We could lead up a pipe with a Bisolite, which would hold the heat in. And when we got to the cold biome, we could switch to Wolframite and build kind of a radiator system like this. And because the um, because this area is so cold, the water will be hot and it will kind of dump its heat into this room. The water will get cooled and then by the time it gets to the base, uh, it'll be nice and cold. And you can just ad adjust the length of the radiator to kind of set the temperature where you want it. You can do the same kind of thing in your base. You can bring in a cold liquid. Let's say your, your base got too hot. You could bring in a cold liquid and run a series of pipes with cold liquid using granite or even better wolframite to uh, kind of cool down the base. Now there's another few devices that let you uh, cool things down. There's the thermoregulator under utilities. You probably want to build it out of gold amalgam because it gets pretty hot. And this thing gives off uh, 14 watts of heat, which is quite a bit. And it works by uh, you, send in, you send in um, gas pipe and pump gases into it. And then there's an exhaust pipe. And it drops the temperature of the gas that you flow through it by 14 degrees. But in the process, the thermoregulator itself gets really warm. So you probably want to put a wheeze wart uh, on either side of it to keep it cool. And you probably want to fill the room with hydrogen because it's really good at uh, absorbing heat. If, for instance, you filled this room with carbon dioxide, these machines would kind of overheat really quickly. 
You could also hook them up in series. Something like this. Probably want to leave some room for some wheeze warts in between. And then take some piping so the output of this one is just the input of this one. So this would drop the temperature of the gas 28 degrees. And you could just do it as many times as you wanted. Now there's a similar device for liquids called the Thermo Aqua Tuner. Uh, you also want to build this one out of gold amalgam. Same idea, but you're putting a liquid in and then there's an output and it'll just cool the liquid that flows through it. And it gets really, really, really hot. So you want to have it submersed in a liquid. Either water or oil makes a good uh, cooling liquid for this thing. As mentioned before, there's the space heater. You want to make that out of gold amalgam as well. And it just lets you kind of heat up a small localized area. And it's usually good to do some uh, automation with it. So you can use a thermo sensor, place it close to, but not directly beside the space heater, and then lead some automation uh, wire between them like this. And then you can set the temperature to whatever you want. So maybe you want it to turn on if the temperature below drops below 30 degrees in your base, for instance. So once that happens, this will kick on, start heating up the air for you. Without the automation, it can the space heater can get really, really hot and it might just kind of melt your base. It's generally much easier to heat up your base than to cool it down. So it's probably pretty rare that you'll be using this unless you uh, build all your kind of all your machines out in a cold biome close to a heat sink. There's also one other piece of uh, machinery under utilities called the liquid tepidizer. And it's good for um, kind of warming up, heating up water. Now, one of these would take a while to heat up this body of water. They're pretty slow, but they'll eventually heat up the water for you. They require 960 watts. So it's a pretty power hungry uh, piece of machinery. And there's a few cases where you'd want to heat up your water. If you heat up water above 100 degrees, it'll start to kill the germs in it. So that's one way to kill germs. The other way is to cool the water. Um, another reason you might want to use it is to boil uh, polluted water. Let's say you had some some polluted water with a bunch of germs in it that you wanted to kill. Or maybe you wanted to boil the polluted water, turn it into steam, which when it condenses turns into pure water. So here you can see an action on a small amount of water, got about 500 kilograms per tile, and we can see it. it's at 64 degrees and rising pretty fast. So it reaches max temperature at uh, 90 degrees. So you can't quite, uh, there's ways to boil water with it, but it's not designed for that. But you can at least get it really warm. You can also drip water onto it and it'll turn it to steam, but there's easier ways to uh, generate steam than this thing. One way to generate steam is to uh, use lava because the lava is at uh, 1500 to 1600 degrees. If you, drip, if you drip, uh, polluted water onto lava or something really hot over, drip it onto something that's over around 120 degrees Celsius, the polluted water will turn to steam and when the steam recondenses, it'll be pure, clean water. As I said at the beginning of the video, three really important things to remember. Abyssalite, it's the perfect insulator. That's uh, this stuff over here. Um, wheeze warts, which are really good for localized cooling, found in ice biomes. And finally, the uh, this thing, the uh, anti-entropy thermo nullifier or the heat sink, as I like to call it. This thing uh, is really good at cooling down large areas. You can also use, I forgot to mention, you can use um, these temp shift plates and making them out of diamond is one of the best ways if you have diamond, which is found down on the bottom of the map. But what these things do is they'll spread out heat or cooling. They'll just spread out the temperature, conduct the heat. So if you built a few of them, probably not that many, but if you built a few of them around this heat sink, it would spread the cooling to a larger area. And aside from those three main things, uh, I suggest building all the machinery that generates lots of heat off in the cold biome, ice biome, next to these uh, heat sinks. These are kind of optional, but 
if you if you don't build them near these the ice biome will eventually warm up and melt after hundreds of cycles or thousands of cycles but if you have one of these things um, you can keep it cool forever so I hope that helped you guys um, when I first started playing this game everything would be great and fine for the first you know 10 20 50 cycles maybe 100 cycles and then all of a sudden the base would start to heat up so I've kind of learned to build a lot of the heat generators outside of the base or just used uh, Weezworts for localized cooling I'm sure I missed a lot of um, things. Uh, if people know extra information that I didn't include in this video, please uh, leave it in a comment for others to learn from. And as always, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.